Hey guys and girls, a video on tyre pressure and all the pros and cons, what the correct tyre pressure is and why. So what inspired this video, I was uh, having a quick check on Facebook and some tyres popped up for whatever reason on Marketplace and I just looked at those and went wow they've been so overinflated it's not funny and then I thought yeah, some people know about this but a lot of people don't so I then you know I copied those photos and put a post up sort of explained it all and then I thought to myself what are you doing, idiot? You're spending all this time writing and putting a couple of photos when you can put more words and video into less time. So here we are again. So all the reasons why, you know, tyre pressure is important. And, you know, I haven't spent an hour or two planning this, okay? So I just want to quickly say it's bang, make it up as you go. So I'm going to miss something. The videos are 80%. So how about this, right? If you like the channel in general, give every video a like. Um, and when you get a video that's really special, instead of pressing like, press like as well, because you're pressing like on every video, press share and share it off to a group somewhere. Help the channel grow. When it makes some more money to help pay for the time I'd be putting in, then I'll sit down for an hour or two, plan the videos, we can get better footage and more editing and put more time into it. So I hope you understand where I'm coming from. I have to give up other income to do these videos, right? It's time. If you want me to put more in, let's do it. But please help me grow the channel by pressing like, putting some comments there so that we know we're doing the right thing or not, what you like, what your experience was, and share those videos. All right, so let's have a look at the photo of the massively overinflated tire. Tire Basics 101. At the end of the day, you got to think about it. It's a big balloon, isn't it, right? So the only part connecting to the rim is the sidewalls here, obviously on both sides. So that's what your tire is standing up on other than air pressure, okay? So just like the sidewall holds the tire up, it doesn't allow it to go any further in and out, right? So it's, it's locked in there pretty well you know it, it does vary a little bit but the middle is the part that the air pressure is going to influence the most so i hope you can see that using those photos of the and we'll show them again throughout this video i'm going to take a bit of a break and pop some more photos in there and i'll do my best to get them around the right orientation but again time is limited because it is time and time is money it's how it works as only as we've only got a certain amount of time so this tire for example you're going to see fairly even wear because we do monitor pressures and adjust them for the conditions now when we say adjust them for the conditions so the first thing i want to point out just quickly is it depends on how much weight's on the tire so let's just use a prado for example again if the vehicle's like a gx and it's not modified and there's nobody in the car you're going to find it's most likely heavier at the front now if you remember the fronts in a lot of cars is doing the the um, accelerating also but in a lot of cases it's heavier at the front the engines there there's no load in the back you know whether it's these four cylinder front wheel drive they're doing a lot of the braking the cornering the accelerating all that sort of thing now in the Prado obviously the accelerating is shared so we don't see a big amount of tire wear from the drive tires because it's all of them and it's nice and even but the front is quite often heavier when it's unloaded so that's something you probably didn't think about you might have let's give an example maybe 13 1400 kilos at the front 1400 let's say ballpark 14 1450 even at the front depending again i said unmodified so without bull bar so let's say in the 1400 kilo range and the rear of the vehicle is only going to be about 1200 kilos you know 12 1250 so in actual fact you're pumping up your rear tires more for load and it's lighter at the rear so take that into account you may want to make use of those weigh bridges you see at the side of the road stop weigh the vehicle put the front on put the rear on separately, you know what I mean? If you don't know how to use that, guys, drive on slowly, get your front on, stop when you see about 1,400 kilos, that's your front axle, okay? Um, drive onto it, then you're gonna see two and a half ton, three ton, whatever it is, 
then keep driving, you'll see the line and then bang, when just the rear's on, you're gonna see, like it might be 1200, it might be 1800, right? So, and the same goes for when you add the load into the rear, you need to pump them up. Because what's happening, obviously, you've got the weight on the tire, and the more weight presses onto the tire, I don't know, I'm, I'm doing my best to explain it here, right? I think most of you will get it, and I think most people really will get it. And most people are going, yeah, yeah, we know what you're talking about. The more you pump up the tire, just like a balloon, it more it presses the center out. So that tire in the photos, it's massively pumped out in the middle. So that's what's making most of the contact area on the road, okay? So it's wearing the center of the tire and it's saving the edges. Now, there's lots of considerations. This can go deep. This video can go for half an hour, an hour. You know what I mean? We'll keep this one down to 10 minutes, right? But thereabouts, you know, that's the target, okay? It's a target. It could be seven or eight. It could be 12 or 15, who knows? So target's 10, okay? So if you do a lot of off-road driving, you often, quite often, you air down. So you've got less contact here, something to think about and more wear on all your edges all the time, right? You get more wear here. So our tires quite often start getting chopped up there and I can see that. And I go, we've got a lot of tread in the middle there. So that's a reason why I run around 40 or a bit over 40 PSI sometimes because when I'm on the road, I'm trying to wear that. I'm not too much. I don't want this big strip down the middle at, you know, 50 PSI. Look, those tires, they look like 50 PSI, but they probably haven't, they probably weren't 50 PSI. They were probably 40, 45 but with not enough load, probably on a Hilux or something, a ute, no weight in the back, and you've just got to have lower, pre the front's doing the braking, right, it's doing the cornering. When you corner, obviously, your tyre wants to sort of fold over and you get wear on the edges, so it's good to have a bit of extra pressure at the front to help um, protect against that, you know, have the, the front, so we've got enough pressure in the middle. But ideally, what you're searching for, trying to work out is that perfect balance across the tyre, because just the same as overinflation will create wear in the middle here, and obviously it's worse than the middle and it slowly tapers off as you get to the edges. Underinflation will do the same as we just explained. You'll have a heap of tread there. So if your tread looks, you know, it's really deep here and you're seeing it's lower on the edges, you generally need more pressure, okay? Now, if the wear's even on both sides of your tire, that's generally a tire pressure problem or worn components in your steering. Uh, a wheel alignment generally is gonna wear one side of your tire, okay? Not always, so there's a lot of general information, but fairly accurately generally, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Um, look, on uh, again, using the Pratus for example, they don't wear tyres, guys. They just don't wear tyres, okay? Even when they've got a bit of inner rack in, they don't wear tyres. They wear tyres really well. So if you're seeing any sort of wear on one side, your wheel alignment's going to be out big time. Um, you've hit something or you've let someone work on it that didn't do a good wheel alignment. You should be seeing pretty even wear on both sides of your tires, remembering the fronts are the ones that are gonna wear on the edges. The rears aren't really gonna wear on the edges because they're just going straight. They're just sitting there. They're just cruising along, they're going straight. You can't mess up the alignment on the rear axle. The only way they can wear, if you've hit something and bent the axle or something like that, but you'll have other problems, you'll know about that soon enough. So don't do that. Um, but when you wanna fix your tires up, so let's just quickly touch on tire rotations and where you put your tires. Generally, I'm going to put, uh, I, I may put my worst tyre on here for the spare for a while. Um, the first place it's going to go back on the car from the spare is the right hand rear because the rears always wear the best and the right hand side of the road's the best. So from being the worst tyre, I want to give it a rest. Then I want to go right hand rear, okay? Right hand rear. And then the next best wearing position is left hand rear. So we're going to go to the right hand rear, to the left hand rear. So there's a method in my madness, right? And they're all going to follow each other in this trail. And then from left hand rear, it's going to go to right hand front. Okay, right hand front. Because your left tire usually always wears more because you've got roundabouts. Roundabouts only go one way. Well, if you're in Australia anyway. So just to keep that in mind, viewers, if you're in other countries, in Australia, we go around roundabouts to the right. And remember that when you come here because some people don't, they're on the wrong side of the road. Obviously can be fairly dangerous. Watch it down the Great Ocean Road there in Victoria. Yes. Anyway, 
from the left front, of course, uh, the right front over to the left front, and then of course that's where it's getting maximum wear, and then we're going to bring it back here and put it on the spare again for a while, and all the tyres are going to follow that process. It may not be what you know you do, and my best recommendation is keep your old spare, the best of your old one, put it on your spare, and don't even rotate it. Whoop, there goes that light. That yeah, that's not uh, just so you know, that's not uh, magnetic there. But anyway. What's going on there? I thought I'd sit it and it'd be alright. Lucky that's our car that we uh, like to give a bit of a knock around every now and then. I'm going to hit the paintwork on this one, but you know what I mean. Uh, whatever. So, let's have a look at that tyre again. Yeah, look, I really just wanted to show you that tyre again. Really have a good look at it. Overinflation is what it is. Let's be clear, because I always get it the wrong way around. I, did I say overinflation, underinflation? Overinflation, where the middle of the tyre comes out, you're getting the wear in the middle and no wear on the sides or minimal. And the opposite, underinflation, wear on the edges. It's pretty straightforward. Think of the tyre as a balloon. Now, so you want to get the right pressure to avoid the wear as much as possible. So you've got to think every time you move the tyre front to rear, what's the weight? Am I heavier on the front or the rear? So it's really important to know that to start off with. And it's the same if you're doing your tyres on your Camry or whatever. Know that the front is going to be a bit heavier, the braking, the cornering, you need a little bit more pressure in the front, a little bit less in the rear, because the rear, again, it's just going to wear in the middle because it's not doing any cornering or whatever. So you, the best way to do it is you get your tyres new, you measure them up, you measure, don't, just watch it at the edges because it tapers off here. I'll give you an example, a lot of tyres used to be sort of 14 mil, so you could measure it there and you could measure it there. After 10,000 Ks, Measure it there, measure it there. And if it's even, happy days. Do that every 10,000 Ks. If you measure, let's say the tire was 14 mil new, and you measure here's 14, 14, and then you do 10,000 Ks and you go, um, let's just give a bad example. Uh, that's 12 mil, and that's 10 mil. Holy cow, Batman, we need to make an adjustment. Now, obviously your tire's wearing twice as much in the middle as it is at the side. Um, not good over a period of 40, 50,000 Ks because you don't have a tyre that's like a slick in the middle with heaps at the side, much like that one in the photo. Anyway, hope you've seen enough photos. Maybe I'll put them uh, at the end again, whatever the case may be. I hope you get the gist. I think we've covered it. Tyre pressure, really important to get your maximum tyre um, life if you like and there's a lot in these later vehicles that have got much better suspension components and bushes and this sort of arrangement and the suspension the wheel on it locks in better than older cars where it's harder to hit a pothole and knock it out usually your wear is going to be either a bad wheel on it or more likely quite often tyre pressure not being set right so very important there's other reasons that you want to have your tyre pressure right as well obviously you're letting them down for more traction we've talked about it before and we'll talk about it again in other videos um, but I suppose one of the other most important things is tyre pressure. Look, people think about comfort as well. So, you know, there's all these other aspects you can look at, but this is probably the most important one, the tyre wear. And the reason is when you get that right, you've got your best traction as well because you've got your whole tyre gripping the road evenly, which is really important. Another quick one just to think about, if you're into tailgating people, and I recommend against it, but if you're into tailgating, or you want to have extra stopping distance and you're not worried about your tire wear too much, it pays to have extra pressure in your front tires because what happens when you hit the brakes, if you ever go and have a look at a skid mark, whatever, or you know, have a suss these things out, depending on tire pressure, quite often what you'll see is because of all that extra pressure going down on the front where the nose dips, it's a bit like that extra load we just talked about and adjusting the pressures, all of a sudden the support is at the sidewall. So the skid mark will be darkest at the sides of the tyre and as you go in, it'll be less. And as I just explained, by having that even pressure, so this is this would, in, in a perfect world, if you wanted to stop quickly in a straight line, you'd put extra pressure in the front and maybe a bit less in the rear, but you know, because the rear's not doing much anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Now, I'm not recommending this, but I'm just sort of giving you that tip to give you the big picture, if you know what I mean, about how that works, um, best just keep a safe distance, you know. It's a car space for every 15 kilometers of speed, okay? So if you're doing 100, it's at least six car spaces. I recommend more, yeah. Someone's gonna jump in front of you, 
uh, whatever, you know, just let them do that and drop back again, whatever. Uh, and, you know, two seconds minimum, three is probably better. If you're towing, guys, extra. You need more distance. And don't go jump in front of all the people towing and the people with trucks. Well, just don't do it to anyone, really, unless someone's sitting in the right lane. You know, you've got to do what you've got to do because some people have got no idea. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of this. Tire pressure, really important. Um, and how to adjust it out so that you get nice, even wear like that. Check out those photos if there was any more there. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Turn the bell on. Have that, uh, you know, ready for the next notification of the next important video. Um, it's coming up close to Christmas and New Year. So, happy, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, all of that sort of stuff. Hope everyone has a good break. What a year, you know what I mean? Where did it go? And uh, my new name for the next month is Captain Casual. So, if you need any parts, you can send through a text and I'll get to the text and I'll get to the order and I'll get to packing and I'll get to sending it when I get to it. Captain Casual until school goes back. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.